she's protective. Come on, Kiwi, let us see your baby. <laughs> Kiwi. What? <gasps> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh my goodness. That's oh, so cute. It's just one or did another one hatch out? I don't know, I think no. it's just one. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. If she'd get off, but I don't think she will. Oh my goodness. Do you have any other eggs that might be hatching? Don't see any cracks. Yeah, I don't see any pips yeah. on them. Do you see any? Hmm. I don't. Oh, see, look, that one has a pip. It? Oh, right there. Oh, it does. Oh, okay, that one's gonna hatch. Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Oh, I think I might have saw something move there, too. Well, it looks like Kiwi hatched out one chick so far, but we think there are a few more that are still hatching out. So we're just gonna watch and hope that we we get more than just one. Are you so excited? Yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty big surprise this morning when we were milking and all of a sudden we saw this little it's chick. So, it was so yeah. tiny. Okay, we won't bug you right now. We'll let you hatch out the rest. my jar of herbal dewormer and they go running. Are you guys ready for a fun evening? Huh Tatum? Winnie, I know you're excited. There you go Tilly. Get up there. Today we're gonna give a close-up of hoof trimming so if you guys like seeing people dig crap out of goat hooves you came to the right channel. Once a month we do their hoof trimming, the herbal dewormer, and I give them a little bit of a mineral supplement called Replamin Gel. It has a bunch of different vitamins and minerals to just help make sure that they're getting everything that they need. And you guys, Kevin built me this really cool crafty crafty stool. Wow. I think you should patent that. Yes. <laughs> it actually works really well. If you have little goats, make a little stool for them, and they can put their little hoof leg right here. So, very cool, Kevin. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna start with Tilly. She's got pretty good hooves, guys. Not that much junk in them. Just a little snip snip here, and a snip snip there. Clean up the little sides that are folding over, and she's good. Now, Winnie's definitely got a little bit more junk in there, but not too much either. Things are looking pretty good, so we'll have to see. Willow always looks amazing. I trim her hooves really regularly, so they are very pristine and beautiful, just like she is. Tatum does not like to have her hooves trimmed, but they're pretty clean too. They're not too bad, so just a little trim and she's good to go. Now for Luna, she's always a mess. I don't know what it is about her, but she gets so much stuff caught inside her hooves. It, it kind of hardens and ugh, it's such a big deal to get everything out of her hooves and get them cleaned up. And it's getting late, but we just got fern in time before the sun set. Just a little bit of junk in there, but mostly a pretty easy cleanup. And I don't need to do Hazel because her hooves were done right before she got here. The next day we got started on the boys. Come on, Winston. You know the drill. Come on, they don't like going up this ramp. <laughs> oh, it looks pretty good. Just an empty change purse. Little, <laughs> little sack. Not only are they stinky, but they have a pretty decent amount of crap inside those hooves. Of course, we always do the back hooves too, but I was just showing the first one because for time's sake. But guys, look how much stuff I found in Zoro's back hoof. Isn't that satisfying? So all in all, Winston's hooves look pretty good. Zoro's hooves look pretty good. Everybody's hooves looks good because we trim them every single month. All right, we're getting out the last 
fluff. He still has more. It's crazy. Summer. Probably need to shave the bucks all the way down. Oh, now you're gonna come up, huh? Winston wants to get sh get brushed too. Oh yeah. This is called a curry comb. This little tool that helps brush out any of the undercoat. So they're both looking pretty good now, I think. Maybe. <laughs> it's okay. Well, it's day two of Kiwi's hatching. And we think just she had the one. I don't see any others under her. Didn't we see a little pip yesterday though? <gasps> there's another one. Oh, there's two. Okay, we got two. Good job, Kiwi. Okay, well, Kiwi, I guess we'll just leave you to it. Doing good. So it looks like just two chicks. So I think we need to do an incubator next time because I'm not sure that putting them under a broody hen or a turkey is gonna really do its job. You are so pretty. We don't have a gold buck here. So that's why we need one. All right guys, our new little buckling has arrived. I know I haven't talked about it much, but I really wanted to purchase another buckling sort of to replace Winston's potential to breed. So Winston's gonna be here for a while, don't worry about that. But in the meantime, I wanted to raise up a buckling so that we could have more variety as we're breeding all of these different combinations. These little girls are very bottle fed like and this little boy is not bottle fed like <laughs> he is not very friendly but we'll get him there are you shy i'm sorry it's scary to be in a new place you are pretty though my plans always seem to change when it comes to breeding but the current plan is to breed this little buckling to Daphne and Olive and then keep any dolings out of them and breed those dolings back to Zorro. In the meantime, I'll breed Zorro to the Tilly line which is Tilly, Fern, and Tatum and see if there are any good does to retain out of them. So, lots of plans <laughs> and I'm excited. I've got lots of great lines now to kind of create a whole new foundation herd of goats. So, these ones I've got, I've got a lot of faith in <laughs> that they will do well. Olive and Daphne have become fast friends now and they're not really sure about that buck. Uh oh, where'd he go? Not too sure about him yet. Right now it's safe to have them together because they're too young to go into heat. And he's just, he's a little too young to breed. He's, he's not gonna quite get there yet. So they'll be together for a few weeks until we figure out the best situation, until he gets kind of situated. We don't want to stress him out too much by putting him over there with Zorro and Winston and have them kind of mess with him. But isn't he so pretty? This is gonna be such a pretty combination, right? That gold color. And then these black with moon spots or black with white, the blue eyes. That's gonna be fun. So I thought I'd show you guys why I chose this exact buckling. Well, first of all, I really wanted a buckling out of Dree Hook Farm because she's probably going to retire soon and I wanted to make sure and get really the best I could get out of her herd before that happens. The thing I'm most excited about is that this new Buckling's mom, or dam, her name is Juno, and she has got a huge, amazing udder. Just lots of capacity and width, and she's really one of the best milkers on her farm. So I love that because I really want to try to bring in great milking genetics. The next thing is that the sire's dam, so meaning that the, this Buckling's father that father's mom, she has an amazing udder as well. She's one of the highest scored goats on Dree Hook Farm, so she has a really high linear appraisal score. And finally, the breeder at Dree Hook doesn't show as often as she used to, so a little further in this Buckling's line are a bunch of permanent grand champions, which means they won grand champion at least three times. So now they're considered just permanently amazing. So hopefully with this buckling we'll bring in yeah some cool coloring but also some great genetics for body structure and milking and maybe some champion lines as well. 
This little buckling back here just arrived today. So he's in a lot of shock trying to figure out why he's in this new place. In the meantime, post some name suggestions below. We already got a ton from you guys on Instagram and we have a few favorites, but we might need a few more. So go ahead and post below if you have any good names. He's total redhead over here and I love it. It's such a cool color. Meanwhile, I'll deal with these two little bottle girls that think that they're still getting bottle fed. Hmm, you guys are never gonna learn, are you? Yeah. It's scary, I'm a little bit scared. Every year when it starts to get warm here, we have to look for scorpions and find them and smash them, get rid of them. They're super painful and the only way to keep the population down is if everybody goes out and hunts early in the season and gets rid of them before they breed and there becomes more of them. Did you find any? Yeah. There's a big one. Oh, you already found one? It moved. Ooh, that one's a big scary one for sure. Wow. It's so crazy how they go glow in the dark like that. Here he comes. Get him. All right. Oh, he's on a rock. Perfect. Squish you with my dear. Okay, wait, get this one before it moves. They're so fast if they move. Ready? Yes. Good job. All right, so there's two down there. You think you can get them? <gasps> They're going, go fast. There you go, you got it. Good job. There's another one, get it. Good job. Get it, that one's running, get it. Good job. All right, Ethan gets to kill this last one. Do it. Good job. Scorpions are normally out at night, so goats don't get stung by them. And then during the day or the early mornings, the chickens will get them because scorpions are nocturnal, so they're only gonna be out at night or the early morning, and the chickens usually can grab them <laughs> in time. So we've yet to have an animal ever get stung by a scorpion. We would probably know because they would be in a lot of pain. I've been stung once, and it's probably the worst pain I've ever experienced. And the reason why we hunt for them is so we can make sure that they don't get in the house and aren't in our boots on the back porch. That's what it's like living in Arizona. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys Lydia's favorite breakfast from the farm. Although we're starting to hit almost 100 degrees, the kale is still holding strong and so we're gonna use the last little bits to make this breakfast. Looks like we've also got just a few little tomatoes ready. So we're gonna pick a few of those and make breakfast. We're gonna start by melting just a little bit of butter in a pot and then adding some flour. Now when you do this, this is called a roux, sort of a base for any kind of sauce or gravy. The trick to really making this taste good is to cook that butter and flour until it sort of browns a little bit. Once we get there, we're just gonna add a little bit of milk from this morning, about two cups, and then stir it till it thickens. And then once it thickens, we'll add some Parmesan cheese, some fresh squeezed lemon juice, and then we'll start putting in the eggs. So if you haven't guessed by now, we're making eggs Florentine. And don't worry if you get a couple shells in there. You just gotta dig them out, no big deal. Finally, we'll put a little salt and pepper on the top and then top it with our kale and then cover and let simmer for about 10 minutes. We just need one more thing to make this breakfast complete. A few little mulberries from the mulberry bush. It's funny, they all ripen really fast 
and then they slow way down and you just get a few here and there. Once it's ready, we're just gonna add a little bit of nutmeg to the top and you have a beautiful, creamy, lemony kale breakfast. Lydia's favorite. How many are there? Oh my gosh, you guys, how can there be that, that many? Is that, one okay? Is that one okay over there? Let's go check on that one. This one just barely, barely hatched. Just hatched. Every day she keeps hatching yeah. out. Kevin, look how many there oh are. Oh my gosh. So every day this week we've been trying to watch and every morning when we come out, it's like she's hatched another one. I think it's because, Kevin, every day we put one out. Do you remember that? Yeah. So we need to line them up because that's the first one and then that's the latest one. Oh, there's another one right there that's little. So we have all these various sizes. I think that this one was the first one and then the second one and then the third. There's another one back there, fourth, fifth, and this one just hatched, sixth. So they're all a day apart. <laughs> Every day what we were doing was gathering the meat chicks eggs and then putting them under kiwi and she, she was just sitting on them so they were all incubated at different days. So I don't even know if she's done guys. So right now we're at number six. She might have more. Yeah. So I'm not sure. So how many more do you think are fertile, Liddy? I don't know, I can't really tell if any have started to hatch. All right, so kiwi's got this little area. <laughs> they kind of get in and out, <laughs> out of that edge right there but Go find your mom, run to your mom. We'll see if she hatches any more. Thanks for joining us today, guys. I don't know how many more she's gonna hatch. So we'll just let you know. Um, if you wanna go back and see the first time Kiwi hatched out some little turkey chicks of her own, you can click right here.